Most people think that, uh, you know, we're just conductors out here with like a coin purse and getting people from here to there, but we're not. We work on freight trains and uh, it's a little bit unforgiving. You go to get your physical and the doctor tell you, man, that's so cool. You work on a railroad, you're, you're, you work, uh, you're an engineer, you're a conductor. They don't really understand what it is. I'm sitting there going, man, you're a doctor. And he's going, yeah, but you work on a railroad. I'm like, yeah, but you're a doctor. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a lot of people don't understand what we do. Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Andrew the Hall. Today, we're gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna talk to my guy, my man, Lance Sugarman. So, Lance. Hi, how you doing? What's up, Richie? Thanks for having me, bud. Okay, so uh, I have a couple questions. You know, I wanna ask a couple railroaders uh, what their experiences are uh, with the railroad. So we're gonna um, ask you a couple questions. Sure, let's do So, it. Um, where you from? Where you name, where you from? All right, I'm Lance Sugarman. I'm from Philly. Richie and I have known each other for the railroad almost 10 years now. years now went to engine school together conductors together so uh, we're working together this week too <laughs> pretty cool so um some, share some of your experiences uh on the railroad uh one of your, your good experiences i think they're mostly good as long as you go home and you still have a job but uh yeah it's not too bad man it's open all night so we're always here you know that kind of stuff but uh as long as we get home at the end of the day that's all i care about it's an interesting experience this whole place is strange <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, tell me about one of your bad experiences on the road. Oh, I, I put a train into the side of a train with remotes. That wasn't a good one. Mm. Uh, put a train and an engine on the ground one time. Right. That wasn't a good one. But I mean, things happen. It's kind of part of the job. Half of it was my fault. Half of it wasn't. But I guess at the end of the day, it was probably my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about it, we all go through the situation here, you know, on the uh, railroad. Right, right, right. So um, tell me what is your, your typical day out on the railroad is? So right now, if I'm on a schedule, I kind of expect to be here. You know, overnight I come in, get my paperwork. I get on the train, take it where it needs to go, shift out some cars, come on back with some cars. Um, so I got to bring my light. I got to bring my radio. I mean, I anticipate being out here 12 hours a night eating on the engine, being cold in the middle of the night, you know, <laughs> now, when, hanging out. When somebody hear that, when you be cold, be up in the middle of the night, do you think that's like a turn off to the railroad or, you know, what, like? I think sometimes it's nice. It's quiet. You don't really have to talk to too many people. You're kind of responsible for yourself. So if you're cool with that, then you should be just fine working out here. I mean, I'm more of a people person. You usually only work with one person the whole night. But, you know, it, it's kind of nice in the middle of the night. Sometimes it's quiet when it's snowing. It's, Pretty. You see some nice scenery, you see a lot of sunsets. A lot of uh, sun's coming up. So, yeah, it's not bad. It's just, you deal with the elements, but, you know, it is what it is. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, so, your equipment, like, what type of stuff do you carry around on a day-to-day -day so, basis? Well, we, we got PPE. I'm not wearing my boots right now. This is getting ready to go home. We're off duty, but I got a, I got my vest. I usually got to wear, well, I always got to wear my vest, reflective gear, uh, some gloves. I got earplugs. I got uh, safety goggles for daytime and night safety glasses. I got a tinted pair, then a clear pair for the nighttime. I got a light. I got my rule books. I got a lunch. I got switch keys. I got a radio. I'll show it to you if you'd like to see. You want to well, see? Let's take a look. This is my grip. It's got my switch keys in there. My rule books. So these are constantly changing. Got to keep all them on you. Got my lantern here. Uh, that's a big book, man. Yeah, I keep all the old stuff because I got a lot of notes in there. So I got my rule book. I got the older one here. I got to swap that out. But I tend to keep some of the older stuff because I take a lot of notes. Constantly changing out here. Still learning after 10 years, so I like to make sure I have all that stuff accessible. I got my light here. These are new lanterns with rechargeable batteries we're responsible for. Definitely need them every night. And my radio here. 
So I, I keep this in my back pocket. And a lot of guys don't use the mics. I prefer to have the mics. So I keep it right close to my chest. So I definitely have that ad always charged. Um, crew packs here. You never know when you're gonna get stuck. Even just to wash your hands before lunch or you never know. You really don't want to try to use the bathroom on the engine. So you find some woods in a crew pack, you're good to go. Been there this week. <laughs> <laughs> I got my track authority book. Uh, we work on some dark territory out here sometimes. So these are important. Track authority here to get you uh, permission to work on the dark territory with uh, railroad, uh, excuse me, with the authority of the dispatcher. So that way you can go in the spots where there's no signals. So gotta have that. Uh, and then some new books. Reverser, I also work as an engineer like Mr. Hall there. Uh, right now I'm working as a conductor, but I always have a reverse for me. This is my good luck reverser. So we'll keep that one tight in the bag. And then I just keep a cheat sheet here of a timetable, which is also my rule book, but I like to have this. Somebody here made this for me 10 years ago. It's a little out of date, but uh, very important for me. Quick checkup, I can see where I'm at, what mile post, check bulletins against this, make sure that I'm going in the places that I know where I'm at, know what the speeds are, and uh, no radio channels this is kind of my cheat sheet. And then in there I keep, uh, these are my cab signal tests, so I always know where these are when I'm working as an engineer. If the engine's got cab signals, gotta make sure I run that test. We're good to go. So I try to keep all my paperwork, things that I need right close together, so it's always accessible when I get on the engine. I'm good to go. Uh, good to go. Get the hit out. My man, always prepared. Here's my best. Some guys prefer the Conrail ones. <laughs> 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 and then I... Like I said, I got a pair of gloves here. These are a little old too, but they get dirty real quick, so. That's cool. That's a lot of stuff to uh, carry around on a day-to-day -day basis, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it gets uh, a little bit heavy, but I'd rather have it than not. Now, if somebody uh, want to get into the, the industry, um, what, what would you tell them? What would you say? What, how would they prepare themselves to get into this industry? Sure. I think if you're interested in trains, uh, you know, maybe it's a good position for you. If you're not interested in trains, that's okay too. I definitely wasn't. I still really, um, I, I've gotten a little bit more interested, but I'm still not into uh, collecting or anything like that. I kind of know the job because it's my job, but I do see why it's fascinating. Um, I would suggest that, uh, you know, if, if you're okay being away from home, if you're okay working different hours overnight, if you uh, don't mind being out in the elements, uh, if you want a good, hopefully uh, a sturdy career that it should be here, then I think the railroad's a good choice. Uh, it, the industry's definitely changed a lot, even in my short time here, but uh, it seems to be kind of growing a little bit again. Hopefully we'll get some more customers and maintain the work that we have and uh, keep it pushing for the next 100 years. But uh, yeah, it's definitely an interesting career. I never thought I'd be doing it. Everybody who I talk to thinks it's awesome, but uh, it seems like the only people who truly understand it are the guys here, and it's really kind of a tight-knit group of guys. We all seem to kind of have that in common, and this is the only place you can really talk about the job where people really understand what it is. Tell me about some of your uh, accomplishments that you, uh, you have. You have sure. you well, when I hired, uh, I was always very timid out here. Richie could attest to that because we kind of came through the ranks together, but I was nervous all the time, and uh, I think this has definitely helped me to gain a lot of confidence. Uh, uh, it's a union job, so I wasn't familiar with that kind of mentality. I think that's kind of helped me grow a little bit. Um, I didn't understand railroading, I didn't understand trains, engines, remotes, and uh, I kind of learned all that a piece at a time. Uh, as soon as I was a year old with seniority from my hire date, I went to remote class. Richie and I went through that together. That was an interesting call on Easter Sunday. Uh, so I got a remote license, which I think was- cool. uh, What was interesting about that call? Uh, it was on East. It was the day before Easter Sunday. Day before Easter yeah, Sunday. One year marked up. Not or not even a year marked up. It was uh, It was just that they called us and said, uh, "Yeah, it's been a year since your hire date." So I think I had seven months marked up, and uh, so that was scary to be honest with you. But I got through that, and that helped me out to learn how to become an engineer. Uh, I went to engine school with four years uh, of service which is kind of funny. We went to engine school and the guys were making fun of us because we were still on the 80% of the pay scale. <laughs> so uh, lowest seniority and least amount of pay. Um, got my engineer's license five years ago. Time just flies by, but they're things I never thought I would do. I got a, a tape of the month one month <laughs> for running a decent train. So that was pretty cool. My kids think it's great. My wife thinks it's funny when I get certificates and stuff. But I mean, yeah, I, I never thought I'd be doing any of this. I like the physical part of the job. I think it's definitely something that uh, I enjoy doing. The work isn't bad. The environment could be a little toxic sometimes, 
But uh, at the end of the day, the work's pretty fulfilling. I, I don't mind the hard work and I kind of like it, so. Now you say physical, what do you mean by physical work? So uh, there's a lot of uh, up and down climbing and uh, tying on handbrakes, carrying heavy things. Uh, even a marker probably weighs about 20 to 30 pounds, uh, constantly up and down on the, uh, so there's a lot of up and down work. Throwing switches can be tough, but uh, you know, it's a lot of walking on uneven ground and, and things like that, working in heavy boots, uh, working in the rain, working in the snow, mm -hmm. carrying a rig, carrying a light, carrying a everything you gotta do out here. And you it see them just, guns, I know you're strong. Oh, yeah. yeah, you, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you got them guns, there you go, there you go. <laughs> oh, you, I heard you're a big collector. Oh uh, yeah, I, I, it, you'd be upset, but it's not the trains. <laughs> I have a couple ornaments on the tree, but uh, yeah, I buy a lot of shoes, buy, sell, trade a lot of shoes. I got pretty big collections, so uh, that's something that a lot of guys here have in common with me too. Where can they find your sneaker collection at? So man, StockX. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I have a, a social media pages. I'm on uh, Facebook is really what I do. I got Twitter, and I got uh, and then my Twitter is Lance Sugarman One. So more than welcome to follow me or say hello anytime. If you got questions at the railroad, uh, I may or may not know, but I'll be happy to find out the answer for you. Um, so yeah, just get at me if you have any questions. It's nice talking with you, thank mm -hmm. you. And also, where can I find you at on the cover? Oh man, that was one sign of... I, mean, I live in Philly, but I'm a Packers fan, so that's probably gonna catch some heat, but yeah. Like we were saying, you know, it just kind of came to mind about you know how fortunate we are to really have this job and, and how good the things are then you start thinking about the things that are really good about it like uh, you know there's people who take our pictures and think that the career is so cool and i love it when you see like a little kid and you kind of wave to him give him some bulletins or you know a calendar or something like that so i, I guess it is important to people and uh, that's probably the coolest part of the job we work on how many different routes? Five different railroads. Mm, special here, yeah. Yeah, so you need three different sets of bulletins, four different sets of bulletins. I <laughs> mean, and everybody wants to tell you, yeah, you'll figure it out. Go ahead, go get them, tiger. <laughs> <laughs> and then we do. And then nobody says thank you or good job or anything like that. But you get paid for it, right? I mean, what do you get? You get the basic day's pay, then you get overtime, everything after eight hours. Right, every day. And it would be nice if you kept your money, but, but you know. we, <laughs> that's another thing people don't realize is uh, we talk about money. I mean, sure, we do okay, but what a lot of people don't realize is all the fees that come with working with the job. I mean, we definitely have uh, probably 40% of our pay at least goes towards uh, either, re well, retirement, uh, then you got railroad retirement, tier one and two, mm -hmm. so your 401k. You got out of service insurance, so you're insured, so you can get paid when you get fired, which is inevitable. Um, then you got what? You got. I mean, it's a good insurance to have. Oh, yeah. It, oh, it's, I'm it's, saying you have to have it. I Listen, I, I, I that's why it's called insurance, right? So when things happen, you can uh, have that. But yeah, I mean, did we got out of service insurance? You got union dues, if I didn't say that twice already. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so really, what you make is nice, but what you take is a little bit different. So the goal is retiring in Indian school what, five or six years ago already yeah. didn't know a thing nope. and, and I know you took to it a little bit better than I did because you have uh, I guess previous experience no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> no but no but you the one that was sitting there in the final uh day in the, the final um exam well day exam whatever it is, same day and you the first one done yeah that was I'm like, I'm like are you kidding me I'm like <laughs> you, that was the worst test I ever took I, I'm not good at tests, and uh, I think a lot of that is because of you. I remember just everywhere we would go in, in Atlanta, we would bring our rule books with us and studying on our phones when we were in the car back and forth. And uh, yeah, that signal test was intense, but uh, I mean, you had to get 100, right? Or you mm -hmm. failed, and if you failed, you lost your job, and that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, but oh, well, it don't lose your job right away. You get another chance. Oh, yeah, well, that's that. <laughs> you know, that chance, but you missed that chance, something is bummed by yeah, you. Know this whole place is about second chances. We're like misfits, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, if I remember correctly, weren't you the one with a... Uh, Come on over, Jay. Come on, Jay. <laughs> that's a yardie. They say, yeah, uh, those who can't teach, that's uh, that's your example. <laughs> you guys are in here making a video, huh? <laughs> it's already 4.15. I should have gone home an hour ago. <laughs> you know, as far as stopping the locomotive, um, you know, I, 
you hit the brick, keep on rolling. Yeah. yeah. Keep rolling. It's like, all right, you got to uh, estimate or the train's going to stop that because you well, that's, don't know. You know, we talk about learning things every day. And as an engineer, that is one of the things you learn. The guys say you, you, you feel it in the seat, and that's absolutely true. I mean, I'd probably get teased for saying I keep both my feet on the ground when I'm running. Because mm -hmm. you can literally feel the, the traction. I mean, you can feel if the train's going to stop or not. And I'm very in touch with that. Maybe I'm making it up, but it feels like it to me, you know? No, and you're not but. making it up because it's how, <laughs> you know, it's, you feel the inertia and you feel like it's how much is vibrating. Like, right. you know what? I need more power. Yeah, a little thing. bit more. It work. It need more. Particularly with some of these engines. I mean, it's not like we get the greatest things, a lot of rebuilds and things like that. And it's, it's kind of funny. It's a transportation company, but some of the power is not the best. No. By some I probably mean most, but <laughs> you make do with what you got. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely important to kind of get out there, feel things out. Yeah, yeah, but it's fun, man. I've made a lot of good friends out here. Like mm -hmm. I said, this is really the only place where you can talk about this place where people actually understand what you do on a daily basis. Right. So, uh, you know, I go home and my wife says, oh, how was work? And I say, oh, I had a great night. Mm -hmm. Even on my bad nights, it's not that bad. You know, because it's always going to be worse the next day when you come in. <laughs> but, uh, now yeah, you do your work. They don't, they don't bother. Maybe they do a little bit. But <laughs> just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. But just hope to make it to the end. Right. It's definitely, yeah. I guess the more I talk about it, it, it is cooler than I think. You know, I, there's a reason people like it, right? Right. I mean, you're getting up on this thing that's, what, 30 feet tall, mm -hmm. 75 feet long. I mean, you and I have taken a million dollar train. And a locomotive is what, 1.5 1. million? Yeah. I mean, how many of our friends drive a million and a half dollar car? <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. And I'm some idiot with no license that they give a license to off the street, you know? So, uh -huh. so I guess to answer your question from earlier, yeah, I mean, everybody should do it. <laughs> it's definitely something that not a lot of people get to experience. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like the wildlife. I think that's cool. The wildlife. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll mention this. Did you ever uh, stall? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I stalled. Uh, I guess I stalled on the Del Air, uh, coming out of Camden, going down towards Park, uh, CSX, and it wasn't my fault. I only had, uh, I think I had one engine, the other was dead, and I had a hundred loads. And uh, I got to the base of the bridge, and we stalled. Mm -hmm. and then uh, we got pushed over the bridge, and the pusher service cut away. Then we stalled again on the bridge. Then I went about six miles down the Del Air. And we stalled again, mm -hmm. and uh, we just didn't have enough power. But uh, yeah, that was an interesting experience because you're thinking, what did, what did I do? You, you kind of try to run the train accordingly. You don't want to get a knuckle or anything like that, pulling too hard or, or making sure that you can stop if you're going too fast with the loads pushing you down the hill. But right. yeah, we had to get rescued. And uh, there was another time where I stalled. I guess that was on the Marsville line. And uh, Maybe that was at the Del Air too, going up the hill. Mm. And I think that one of the MU cables came undone, so I was only getting power from the lead unit. <laughs> that was an easy fix. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was where it goes from 20 to 10. And uh, yeah, that is not a good experience. Oh, okay. So you ever had a, 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 a oh shit moment? I had a, um, uh, yeah, yeah, coming out at, at CP Jersey there too. Mm -hmm. I had a 100 car loaded stone train coming up to the signal. The dispatcher tells you you got the light. And uh, for anybody who's been there, I don't know who would have because it's a tough spot to get to. But at CP Jersey, you come out at Hatch on a slow approach, prepared to stop at the signal at Jersey, which is up a hill. Mm -hmm. But you're going up the hill with 100 cars, getting pushed towards the hill, trying to s slow your train down behind it. So you're trying to maintain your slack behind you. And, pool if you get the light you should have the light then uh you don't have the light <laughs> and i think i got probably not as close as it felt but definitely an uncomfortable feeling you can't see it around the bend with all the trees and everything but uh, yeah that that was uncomfortable that's probably as close as i came to a no shit moment oh wow but even then i knew i had it under control uh but in that moment it, it, it's a little intense man mm. i hit a car you uh, did yeah i hit a car in front of a bar, that was a bad feeling. Oh. And uh, thank God the guy wasn't in it, but he got arrested, he was drunk, and uh, yeah, that was a bad feeling. That was the only time I had to dump a train, and that was because I hit him. But I, I feel worse if I hit an animal than that guy. I mean, you kind of got to try to get hit by a train.
train, right? I mean, yeah. so you stay off the tracks. I mean, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. only go two ways. Yeah, you, know, you can go anywhere. Yeah, you can go one way. Right yeah. to you, <laughs> I can't bang but, this left or bang that right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, that's funny, but it's true. I can only go forward and back. But that was that was a bad feeling. Hitting a car, uh, he was stuck in the gauge. Literally, two wheels on each track facing my engine, and I hit him right in the. Uh, right in his hood mm. and thank god he wasn't in it i was able to stop uh, maybe eight or ten car lengths past it and i'm and it was actually by a bar on depot street and uh, i got out it was a conductor stayed on my head and i got out and everybody was all worried and the guys like it's my car and i'm like, <laughs> like bro like so yeah i mean that that was probably my big associate moment i i wouldn't want to hurt anybody but it didn't hurt me. I kind of thought it would. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know what that felt like, did you ever hit anybody? No, I had not. Yeah, it. it's a bad feeling. I'm only, you know what? I tell you, only hit those trees, trees yeah. there. But you brace for an impact that almost doesn't come. But, so, but it's the noise, though. Yeah, oh yeah, the crunch of a, a of a vehicle. I mean, it's and that car was totaled. I mean, there was no two ways about it. I was only going 15 to 18 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. I just cleared Norris, but you, you first thing that hits your mind is oh shit. Second thing is, is this my fault? <laughs> Third thing is, am I gonna have a job? And then you wonder if you killed somebody. Maybe not in that order, but it's a it's a bad feeling. Right. And uh, the fact that you can't just stop in five feet is, you know, kind of a big deal. Mm. I mean, it took me what the eight car lengths, five hundred feet to stop after I had already hit them. Right, the one fifteen. So, yeah. With the training kick too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the training kicks in. You. You set your brake and you realize you're not going to stop, so you dump it, you bail, you start giving back the notches, and all of a sudden you go, maybe I do know what the hell I'm doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But, uh, yeah, that was probably the biggest oh shit moment when I thought I might have killed somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, you look out for each other. That train that I saved going through some switches wasn't even my crew. Mm -hmm. You know, you observe trains going by and you're supposed to watch them and look for markers and broken stuff. And, I mean, sometimes you find it, right? Right. Was it you who found a, uh, or you were on the train that had a tree sitting on it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've stopped with a tree sitting on me, yeah. But that's the funny thing is, like, these guys, they say, like, well, it worked when you got here. Well, when do things break? Mm -hmm. I mean, the answer is when they break, right? Right. <laughs> so, sure, it just worked, but now it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, you, you were just sitting at a, a stop, right? And then yeah, okay, somebody observed the tree sitting on top of your train? Yep, and I, I walked <laughs> back there to about 20 cars, and I looked, I said, oh yeah, we got a little... Uh, How about that? Yeah, look at that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I didn't hit the joint, it must have, you know, just fell on top of me. Yeah. We just stopped, and I don't know. Well, before the PTC, I remember being lined the wrong way, mm -hmm. uh, going over towards Arsenal, up towards South Philly, and I was supposed to go down the hill towards 30th Street. And I'm booking, you know, 18 miles an hour, getting ready to drop down to 15 and then 10, whatever I'm doing. And then you kind of go, oh, that's a peculiar signal. I never saw that here before and realize that we're going left instead of straight. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a big deal. And the dispatch is kind of, oh, yeah, well, if you can stop, go ahead and stop. And uh, we'll reline you. Like, just so casual. Right. You know? <laughs> hey, yeah, don't worry time. about it. <laughs> it was a 62W, so I mean, it's you know, how many cars is that? 80 cars, 90 yeah, cars, yeah, loaded yeah. stone, going down a hill. No way. Right. <laughs> then, like, I'm sitting back off, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, well, I'll just shove them back. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I'll just do that. What about the two signals that I'm still occupying, you know? <laughs> but it's, fun. it's funny in hindsight, a lot yeah. of the stuff, even your most stressful stuff. Like, you look at a cut sheet sometimes, you come in and you go, really? I got 40 cuts, no utility, and it's the middle of the night, and it's raining. It's mm -hmm. like, then you get it done, you know. I don't want to, but who the hell wants to be here more than they gotta be? Right. right. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not bad. It's really not bad. We used to have a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, start. <laughs> <laughs> call that yeah, you the gotta drag. be on camera for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the call that the drag. Yeah, they said like, a, I remember hearing them say like the. The five to seven year mark is like the, the time in your career where you tend to get the most in trouble. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess that's when accidents happen more. Or, and I remember thinking, well, that's kind of ridiculous. Why would that be the case? And then I got to my five to seven year point. And I'm kind of like, yeah, maybe they were right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, I lost my way a little bit. Yeah, how about maybe, that? Let me straighten, tighten up a little bit. But you can get complacent. I mean, it's, it's a little bit monotonous. You kind of doing the same work over and over and over again. You might be going different places, but 
you start looking at the watch and go, okay, in 20 minutes I'll be there. In half an hour I'll be there. And you can't speed it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we say. It ain't the speeds, right? It ain't speeds. It definitely ain't the speeds. I mean, so it's a, I don't know. You got to find new ways to make it interesting so you can stay involved. Mm -hmm. Now with the new technology, it, it does kind of make you lazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it tells you the next mile post, the speed to be at, and it'll almost, well, it will. It'll take action to make sure that you're at that speed. So it's almost... What am I doing here? <laughs> Staying awake to hit the alerter, you know? Right. I was hitting the alerter and I was uh, stepping on the cab signal instead. <laughs> I mean, it's like that game Bop It. You know, it's like Bop It, Tap It, Pull It, you right. know, Twist It. But uh, yeah, some of the chirps start to sound like after a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's not good. And you would say, no, no. What the hell could it be? What the hell could it be? Did you drop the breaker on the back wall and reset it? That's, it. that's the answer for everything, isn't it? Yeah. You're kind of on your own with that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got people who, who are helpful, but. I mean, you're responsible to figure it out. Right. And that that's kind of cool, too, when, uh, you know, you get on an engine and there's six things wrong with it and you start kind of running through your mind troubleshooting of where should I start and what could the problem really be. And then you realize, you know, an MU cable came out or, or you got a breaker stuck or down or, or, or the engine handles aren't set up properly or something like that. I mean, or something as simple as just your field generator switches down and you're wondering why you're not pulling. Mm -hmm. You know, that happened to me about a million times. Yeah, it happens. But, uh, no, nah, that, that kind of stuff is interesting and it makes you feel accomplished when coming from a background where I never really cared about the stuff, looking at something, you know, yeah, I can kind of figure this out. You right. know? Getting a cut sheet, I like the mathematical side of it where I figure out all these moves and how can I make this easier for myself in the most efficient way possible. Mm -hmm. I like that kind of thinking, that critical thinking. That's a big component too. Is you really got to think, think on the fly, uh, make adjustments, mm -hmm. it, it, you yeah. anticipate doing it. <laughs> this is thinking man's game, isn't it? Yeah, isn't yeah. It? 100 percent of it. And if you, you can't think on the fly or just pivot, then what? Then what happens? You, you get caught up, but then everything goes to shit. Sorry, <laughs> but it's true. It I mean, it, you may think you have the best idea in the world, then all of a sudden a curveball comes out, and you just go. <laughs> Where do I even begin? And uh, you can't write anything down because you got a lantern, you got a radio, you got three trains that gotta go. And now all of a sudden this is the priority when that was the priority. Or, or all these cars are out of order and this is dangerous here and it's gotta go there. And it, you really do gotta kind of figure it out. You're absolutely right. It is a thinking man's game where you may be given a set of rules and then you get out there and the world's completely different. And that happens frequently. I mean. Uh, but you also have to notice it too. Some guys are a lot better at it than others. I think you and I got pretty good in the yard because we've been stuck in the yard oh, for yeah, a long we so time. Stuck? No, no. Yeah. Force, force into the yard. Yeah, we uh, I think got that seniority stuck on a job. Yeah, that seniority meant nothing. No, we would bump each other just to take each other's spots, just to not <laughs> have to be forced to the same job, just to make whoever was in charge mix it. Right. It was, it was kind of against our seniority, but. Uh, yeah, that, that was <laughs> a lot of fun back then. Yeah, lots changed though. But uh, yeah, definitely you come in and then it's, it's uh, different every day for sure, man. Mm -hmm. It's definitely different today. Uh, you know, we probably had some other work that we weren't able to get to because the training was in the way. And tomorrow I'm anticipating having to do that, but I might come in tomorrow and have to take something somewhere else. I mean, I think the first train you ran, you and I were working a remote job on a Sunday morning or something, and then they called us up at the Louvre <laughs> and I said, hey man, we got a, a 38G that's got to get to Camden. Mm. You up for the challenge? And I think we were out of engine school for maybe two weeks and you said, hell yeah, let's take it. That was your first morning. train, right? I believe it was. It was I think and Will Stoddard took us to that train. Yeah, well. and I didn't even know you could get up there that way. No. I remember the road was closed and he kind of went around and, but yeah, and then that was probably the more intimidating ride than the PTI. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I remember, I, I always appreciate that about you, in particular, you always grab things by the balls, man. I uh, was always more timid than you and I went to school together, and you just said, just do it, man. You just get in like, there. I mean, just do it. And uh, that was kind of the mentality I started taking. What? I know I knew it, it just was a matter of doing it. And I knew you knew it. Well, I, it, and I knew you knew it. <laughs> it's just like, um, I don't know, I don't know, don't know get this shit done. Yeah, exactly. And now it's kind of like muscle memory. But, I mean, you can be running an engine and just, just lose yourself in the moment and then before you know it, you're 40 miles down the road. Mm -hmm. You're completely paying attention and everything's working just fine, but 
you don't even think about what you're doing, you're just doing it. Right. So, and that's why it's important to have a two-man crew, right? I mean, it's yeah, yeah. very easy to get bored. You you hit a you hit the tunnel at Phoenix, and all of a sudden you got <laughs> another thirty miles to go, and you're just going, "Jeez, it's yeah. six a.m., seven a.m." Oh man, even earlier than that sometimes. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Make sure you bring food with you. <laughs> More than you think you're gonna need. <laughs> Dress warm. Yeah, all the things that you learned one time that you never forget, right? Oh, like getting rained on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bring a change of clothes, socks. Yeah, you've never been hungry until you're railroad hungry, right? <laughs> you're sitting there waiting for a jitney for five hours and you've been done, you know? And you're just gone. Man, I've never been this hungry in my life. Yeah, you better start getting the walk in there. Yeah, yeah figure that like, out. Looking at that water, like, that water been in that water. <laughs> yeah, you start <laughs> second guessing your <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah, right. I, like, I, think, I think I'm just reaching to get some water. Just, you know what I mean? The water been sitting inside that, the, the melt of ice for yeah. a while. You know, a little hot, but I'm a little hungry. <laughs> yeah. now, you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe that'll hold me over to Skittle I found on the ground. <laughs> oh, I've never been yet. that fast. It is all over the bottom of your bag. Like, oh, I ain't gonna have these crackers. Oh, yeah, I didn't even know you were I just drew Mike and I. If you saw in the earlier part of the video, I just drew Mike and I because I didn't even know I had. Uh huh. <laughs> but, no, nah, it, it, it's fun. But this place is great for nicknames, I'll tell you that. Oh, <laughs> oh man, you want to show us this board, this board over here? No, the. Oh, you sure you want to show us this board over here? You sure? <laughs> That's incriminating. It's incriminating? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. But, uh, yeah, this place is definitely good for that. Definitely good for nicknames. Nicknames, working on holidays, and not sleeping in your own bed. That's the three things this place is good for.